2K Sports and the PGA Tour. Proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Players' Championship is about to begin. Pleased you could join us for this first round action. Welcome back to the stadium course, TPC Sawgrass. I'm Luke Elby alongside Rich Beam. And Rich, you know you're at Pete Dye's big property as soon as you get underway here. Opening par four, 426 yards. And this fairway sits more across you instead of in front of you. So players want to generally work the golf ball from left to right to give them the best odds of finding the fairway. Second shot is to a plateaued green that usually runs a little bit from left to right down the slope. Not an overly difficult starting hole, but one that's tough to make birdies on, but pars should be easy to swing by. Can't wait to see how today's play plays out. Time to get to the action. And let's see what he can do here today. That's tidy. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? And from about 105 yards. Pay attention, folks. That's how you play golf. Eight feet to the cup. Well, that's a nice way to start, writing a little red number down on the school card at first. I can't ever recall him making a birdie and feeling bad about it. So, yes, birdie on the first, great job. He's in a share of 12th place. The first of our birdie opportunities comes at the second, par five. Driver not necessarily required here because you have to shape your tee shot from right to left. And if you're a right-handed golfer, that's not the easiest thing to do. So lefties have a better opportunity, I think, of finding this fairway than most with driver. From there, a second shot over a long bunker to a green that's very narrow, dotted by pot bunkers. Truly is one of the coolest par fives on this layout. Opting for the five iron. All right, we're going with an extra club here. Okay, that'll work. No surprise to see Colin Morikawa have a few more highlights. Let's take a look at this one. Third shot now. Beamer, that was right out of your playbook. A touch of wizardry. And back to the play, shall we? And Henny, what are they looking at here? Straight back up this hill can be firm here. This one's looking good. Well, how good's that for the Eagle? And now at three under overall. Always like to see your name moving up the leaderboard. Never a bad thing. Let's take a look at the par three third. Straight away mid iron to short iron shot. Par three, just 177 yards from the back, but this green is always firm. Be wary of that. Hope it gets a good kick to the left. Good shot there. Always love these opportunities, especially when it's for birdie. it's going to no oh, that's a ripper Luke I don't know if you know this or not but nothing rolls like a ball currently four under for the event well the fourth is another great example that it doesn't need to be a long par four to be a testing one this fourth can be menacing can't it 
just a small little twisty par four. Just going to take out a fairway wood, find the fairway, and from there you're going to have a small second shot, probably a wedge. Three distinct sections to this green, the front, the right, and the back left, and all of them have their difficulties when hitting your approach shot into them. However, in my mind's eye, if you find the fairway, you should have a decent look for birdie. And the effort, that one. Time for the second shot here at the fourth. Oh, golf clap. That's a beauty. Putting for birdie here. That's pretty tidy. And now intrepid on course reporter, John standing by. Hey, guys, we are checking in with Bubba Watson as he gets set for his next shot here on the 15th. And from the greenside rough here, Wow, what a save. That was spectacular, Luke. Great work. Great shot. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Our current leader is up by three shots. All right, Rich, the par four fifth. A strong hole this one, isn't it? Huge mounding down the left-hand side that you want to avoid at all costs. The bunker down the right-hand side, to be fair, is not that bad. But a little further right of that, though, that's the water. You want no part of it. Second shot is downhill to a green. To be fair, that's mostly flat. Runs from back left to front right, but one of the more benign greens on this layout. What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? And from around 135 yards... Well, that's comfortably on the dance floor. Well played. Oh, wonderful shot. And a chance for Birdie at the fifth. Rich, why don't we catch up on some of the other action going on around the course? What an excellent strike by Brooke Henderson. So close. Okay, time to return to the action. And this putt to move into a tie for second. And that's their fourth booty of the day. And that will move into six under par. Currently has a share of second place. The tee shot at the par 4 6 has changed a lot now that that tree's been taken out of the way, Rich. But uh, what do you think of this short par 4? I missed the tree. I thought that was a really cool feature of this hole. You had to flight it underneath the tree back in the day to find the fairway. The bunker down the left-hand side has been expanded quite a bit as the lake on the left-hand side has been added as well. The front part of this green is protected by tall palm trees that will certainly make you think on your second shots. This is a wonderful little par four. Nicely hold. Let's catch up with the current proceedings. Time for the second shot here at the six. This is a ball striking clinic. Yet another green in reg here. Three feet to go here to the hole. Little birdie look in here. Just two shots back after that hole. As we go from a wonderful little par four, we go to a challenging longer par four, the seven. Difficult par four, 451 yards, water and sand all the way down the left-hand side. Hit it out to the right, find the green with your second, and sprint to the next hole, making four.
quality shot that one and playing this one from around 120 yards out two strokes off the lead well this one's going right at the flag that was a beauty Oh, this will be good for the momentum. Let's make this birdie putt. This looks like it's got the speed and the line. That's a lovely putt to make for birdie. Take some pride in that one. And that will take him to eight under. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. The eighth hole, a long par three, stretching 240 yards at its maximum. It's no sleeper, that's for sure. I don't find anything sleepy about this hole. The front of this green is so narrow. There's no place to land it, especially when they put the flag stick there. This hole will grab your attention as it should because it's a long iron to a sliver of an opening. Even when they put the pin on the right-hand side, you want no part of it. The center of the green all day long here. And mark it down. That's birdie number seven on the scorecard. John, what's going on? Talk to us, Goose. Hey, guys, we are checking in with Brooke Henderson as she gets set for her next shot here on the 10th. Oh, almost went in. And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. Final hole on the opening nine at TPC Sawgrass Stadium course, Rich. is a clever three-shotter. Par five, 583 yards from the back. Most players will play this as a three-shotter. Just find the fairway out to the left. Second shot out to the right. Sets up a very simple third shot to a very narrow green. Miss it right or left. Good luck getting it up and down. Sitting at nine under. Currently tied for first place. Well, that's certainly showcasing all their talents there. That's impressive. Two big hits there, knocking in on this par five and two. Oh, that had eyes for a lovely shot. And with that, he's now broken the tie, all alone at the top of the leaderboard. The back nine at TPC Sawgrass starts off with a shortish par four, but it really requires accuracy off the tee. It does. I've seen a lot of players try and challenge the tee shot down the left-hand side. That's a huge no-no. Just bail out to the right, leave your second shot just a little bit further back, and you'll be rewarded with a fairly straightforward shot into a green that has some mounding, but overall fairly gentle. Yeah, that'll work. That's fine. And Henny, what's he looking at here? Yeah, I think he's got around 135. Yeah, that one's looking good. A wonderful shot and a chance for birdie here on the 10th. Right on four feet, should make this one. This is their look at birdie. Look at him just surging ahead at the top of the leaderboard. Leading by three strokes now. There's some birdie holes out on this course, and the 11th is certainly one of those, but uh, there are some troublesome spots if you get out of play. There definitely is trouble, but the thing I love about this hole the most, Luke, is that there's so many different ways to play it. Most players will take driver off the tee, but from there, now it's anybody's ball game. 
you don't have to go for the green on the second shot. You can lay it up over the left. You can lay it up over to the right. You can lay it up long left. There's so many different ways of attacking this hole. Each individual is going to do it differently. I love the second shot on this hole. Look at the shot that this player possesses. Well, that's a bonus. Mark that down on the card. And back to the course with the live action. Here we have the second shot into the 11th. Opting for the hybrid, I think. Well, that's beautifully judged. Just a full footer remaining. Don't want to miss it. Could be costly. Their short game has been very impressive. They've been really sharp today. And this is quality play, still on top of the leaderboard. Well, the tee shot is all that matters on the short par 4 12th. Most players can reach the green. It's just a decision whether the player goes for it or not. They can, but they better be aware that there's a lot of danger up there. Water left obviously is no good, but even bailing out to the right in those dunes, in the mounds, the little pot bunkers on top of those mounds, well, forget about it. That's not a good space either, especially since the green does run pretty hard from right to left. If you want to take this hole on with driver and expecting to make three, well, you need to realize that a five and a six could be easily made as well. What an opportunity to make a birdie. That will work. Well, with that good play, this person is now in first on the leaderboard with Colin Morikawa in second. Well, as you start to head for home here at TPC Sawgrass, you're blessed with this wonderful par 3 13. And this is a really cool par 3. You've got three distinct areas on the green, front right, all the way on the left-hand side, and the back right. Wherever they put the pin is going to dictate what shot shape you want to have into that green i think it's a really cool design because it requires you to think about how you want the golf ball to land on the green and the way you want it to bounce i think pete Dye did a great job in designing this green this putt coming up is for birdie that will work on a roll here with back-to-back -back birdies. Two in a row there, Luke, getting their groove on. Johnny Mack, what's the news? Hey, guys, we're checking in with Colin Morikawa as he gets set for his next shot here on the 16th. Oh, that's incredible. He sold it. All over the parking lot, but a chip in for par saves the day. Our current leader is enjoying a six-stroke advantage. There's a few birdie opportunities out of the gate here on the second nine at TPC Sawgrass, but it really starts to toughen up down the stretch, starting here with a difficult par 4 14. Difficult tee shot on this plank, some 481 yards from the tip. You find the fairway, and you've got a decent chance of finding the green with your second shot, but if you're out of position anywhere on this hole, your number will go up exponentially. Yeah, you hit a beauty, didn't you? What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? He's got, hmm, I'd say, a solid 145 here. This one is right down the pipe. A wonderful shot into 14. It sets up another look at birdie. And down it goes. Let's head to the next. He sits in first position. The par 4 15th again requires another strong tee shot because there's some trees in the way, Rich. 
One of the more simple tee shots on the golf course, par four, 470 yards. Just a little fade required off the tee to the fairway. The green sits up above the fairway a little bit, surrounded by a couple of bunkers, but I gotta say, I like this hole. It's straightforward, it's simple, before you head into the final three. And this shot here coming up from around 130 yards. Going with the eight iron here. Ooh, just skin the hole, that one. Oh, that's a high caliber shot. Four feet to the cup. He's staring down a birdie putt here. Beautiful shot. After that hole, this player is currently in first place with Colin Morikawa in second. As we head to the 16th tee, the famous par five reached the start of the gauntlet. Ideally, players want to take their tee shots from right to left, start off that fairway bunker and move it left back in the fairway. Anything down the left-hand side can get caught up into those trees and really cause players issues with their layup. You find the fairway, now you have a massive decision to make. Go for it or bail out to the left thinking that's the safe play. It really is not. You have to be brave and try and find this green with your second shot. If not, it could come up and bite you. Here's Brooke Anderson. Going with the nine iron, I think. This one looks like it'll safely make the green. Wow, what a shot. Let's get back to it, shall we? To win the Players' Championship, you've got to run the gauntlet, Rich. Here we are with that big testing second shot at 16. The water down the right-hand side is very obvious. What's not obvious are the grass bunkers on the left-hand side. You hit it in those, no guarantee of getting up and down. If you take on the green and find it, then you're almost guaranteed a birdie four. Not bad. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one? It's 13 feet out. Unlucky for some. Looking good. Super shot, that. Leading by eight strokes now after that hole. All right, Rich, you've stood there, you've hit the shot. Take us through the par 317. When you play here in a practice round, it looks like you could just throw it on there. But when you're in a tournament round, it doesn't even look like it exists. It, the hole changes so much when the tournament starts. That's what I love about it. You just add 35,000 people who are having some fun and ready to heckle you if you knock it in the water. Eh, good luck. Enjoy. Yeah, good swing. This one's heading up onto the green for sure. Well, oh, what a wonderful shot into the 17th. It sets up another putt inside birdie range. Of all the shots that I like the most, that one ranks right up there. Yeah, it's just about three feet away. Still in the lead now after that hole. When you feel like you've survived the 17th, you stand on the 18th tee and you think to yourself, where do I hit this? It's just one of the most difficult, visually intimidating holes I think you'll ever face in your life. Somehow, try and hit it down the right-hand side of the fairway, keep it out of the rough, and from there, hit it out to the right-hand side of the green somehow, also keeping it out of the rough or that pot bunker short right. Listen, 
you'd be happy to make five here. That's for sure. Fours are magnificent. Threes are unicorns. They really don't happen that much. It is such a difficult, demanding finishing hole. Probably one of the toughest in championship golf. Looks to have opted for the eight iron. That was special. This one here, this is for back-to-back -back birdies, moving him in the right direction. There's part of about six feet coming up. And with that putt, concludes this player's round.